I Wish Actors Knew, Base Camp Edition. Hey everybody, I'm Matthew Cornwell with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my amazingly talented, beautiful wife and best friend, Brooke. Aha. And this video is part of our ongoing series, I Wish Actors Knew. And this week we're talking about Basecamp. I was so excited to sit down with Jessica Farmer, another multi-hyphenate. She's both an actress and a Basecamp PA. Knowing both of those roles made Jessica a unique person to interview to talk about the behaviors that actors can adopt that will either make her job easier or harder as a Basecamp PA. Let's get to the interview. Thank you, Jessica, for being here. It is a pleasure to meet you, actually, uh, for the first time. I, I'd love to just sort of get a little bit of a background on you, sort of what brought you to this point in your career? Um, what was that sort of trajectory of ending up running base camp and any other sort of tidbits about this industry along the way? Yeah, of course. Um, so my name is Jessica Farmer. Uh, professionally, I go by Farmer. Um, there's a lot of Jessicas. Um, I'd say you can call me Jessica, but if you're calling me on the walkie, I probably won't answer. I'm like, wait. Who? Who is that? Um, so I started as an actor in um, Wilmington, North Carolina, um, but I kind of always had friends that were on the crew side. You know, I did like local theater. And then I moved down here because I was tired of driving down for callbacks all the time. And I was like, I just want to like meet people. I want to do stuff. So I got an unpaid internship at Crazy Legs Productions. <laughs> And um, I just started PAing on their sets, and I found out that I just love being on set. I just, like, I love acting, of course. You know, I still have an agent, but um, I consider myself now a crew member who occasionally acts. Um, I People are like, oh, you know, would you choose one or the other? And it's, I, I, I couldn't choose. Um, and I try to let my experience with acting kind of inform how I, you know, talk to actors and how we treat them. Because, you know, actors are a department as well. Um, I like to say, you know, you have to give actors a chance to take things off the truck, so <laughs> to speak. So, for instance, props, you know, they will be preparing everything for the entire show, right? And they have everything all set on the truck, but then they'll just bring out what they need for those scenes, you know, to have them ready on the table. And I feel like it's similar for actors where it's like you're going to read your character, you're going to know the script, but there's that important time to, like, sit there and, you know, actually read the scene and get into the character and do that. So that's actors taking things off of the truck. Mm. So it's like that's why we give actors space, ideally, I feel like. That's why we give actors their their chairs or one of the reasons. And, you know, the trailers, and it's like because there's a lot of internal work that has to happen. Just like every other department has their own staging and setup and truck. That's, you know, what we give actors. So I've run base camp before. Um, in terms of, like, my specialty, I w you know, I'm not going to come here on the show and be like, ah, oh, yes, I am the base camp PA in Atlanta because, no, I know people that are way better at it than me. But I spend enough time on base camp. I spend enough time um, both in the, um, I'd say, like, I'm not going to call it indie world, but, like, your lifetime, your hallmark, that sort of a thing mm -hmm. where it's going to be IOTC. It's going to be SAG. It might not be, like, DGA or Big Network. And I've also run base camp on your bigger network shows like uh, Disney, Class of 09. That's you know, awesome. did the pilot, all sorts of that good stuff. I've settled into the AD world, um, spent a lot of time base camp, running first team, running background. So uh, let's let's kind of start to talk about that day on set and uh, when an actor is arriving. Let's start with, with call time. Yeah. Because um, one thing makeup was saying was, you know, your call time is almost always your makeup call time, you know, in terms of uh, if I have a 7.06 call time in the morning, that's uh, oftentimes if I look over on the next column mm -hmm. where, where it says makeup call, it's 7.06. Yeah. That's, it's the same as the call. You're going to be contacted by the second AD the night before, and they're going to tell you, like, when, like, your pickup is, if you're, like, from out of town, and when your call time is. Um, and also, like, the exact address, the, any any other things that you may need to know. And so my department, the AD department, we're the ones that are going to be primarily communicating with the actors. But a lot of times, because actors have a fitting, like, a couple days in advance, they, like, that's the first safe person that you meet, right? Like, it's like, hey, we've had a fitting. So it's tempting to want to reach out to the costumer and be like, hey, do you know when I'm supposed to show up? And they're like, I know what you're going to be wearing, though. <laughs> That's that's the AD. That's the AD. So um, that's kind of your your first point of contact, really. Um, your first line of defense is always going to be the AD team. And yeah, um, you should be like, really, it's like with anything else, you should be ready to start your day, start your job, which means like getting there with enough time to get your stuff in to, you know, give your breakfast order to the catering PA or the base camp PA, whoever is taking it for you. 
Um, there's a fine line, though, of like, don't get there too early because it is a bad look for us. You know, a lot of times we're given anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes to like get there, to get all of our ducks in a row, to get the call sheets, you know, the call sheets and sides available for the actors to put them into their trailers and start getting our head screwed on straight. And so if you're just wandering around like 45 minutes before your call, it's just like, hey, I'm ready. It's like, great. Your trailer isn't even on yet. Can you go wait in your car and pretend that you aren't here for another 15 minutes, please? That's a great point. Um, and does it make a difference uh, that sort of ideal window of being early if if I know I'm coming in midday, like I have a 2 p.m. call, but I know that the general crew call is or, or that the first first setup is actually much earlier in the day? Because I, I feel like I've shown up on set before when uh, midday and they were using my trailer for somebody else who was. Yeah, wrapped. no, that's. And so they're trying to switch that over. In general, there's a lot of moving pieces and a lot like a lot of parts and information going on. And so it's it's really hard for me to say just like blanket statement. This is always what it's going to be. Um, for instance, like sometimes it makes more sense for us to get lunch for an actor. Sometimes it makes more sense to have an actor go and walk the line. Like if you aren't in the first scene up after lunch and there's 15 other actors, like we simply don't have the might not have the manpower to get lunch for every single actor. And then it might be cold. So we might say, hey, you can walk the line or, hey, no, no, we'll get it for you. So there's always going to be like what's best for which situation. Sure. But, you know, yeah, sometimes you only have one trailer and sometimes an actor raps and then just wants to hang out, I guess. I'm like. Oh, like, I've been here for 16 hours. The rest of the crew's gone. You good in there, buddy? <laughs> it's, I think, just, like, being aware that um, for, and like, an actor to be in base camp, like, in your trailer, there's costumes that, like, they're waiting until you leave to get your costumes to figure out what needs to be washed for the next day, what needs to, you know, lay, like, they have a whole filing, like, organization system on the truck. They have to put it there. Um, you know, if you are getting makeup or whatever taken off of your face, because that is something that I'm pretty sure makeup has mentioned that they offer, you know, like, just to but for the health of your skin, because, yeah. you know, maybe like some actors aren't used to wearing like that much makeup, they will take it off for you. But it's like they have to have a chance to do that and then get out of there. And then the guys who drive the trucks who have been there since 3 a.m. have to then go in, clean it, turn it off. And so there's a lot of people that are kind of, you know, waiting on the actors for, you know, to put it put it politely. <laughs> Yeah, you know, one of the themes that kind of came up uh, specifically when I talked to uh, Beth, uh, who's a makeup artist, was we, we sort of summed it up this way, uh, especially if you're a, a start work finish all in one day, that it's not a spa day. Um, you know, yeah. But, it's, uh, it, but it can feel that way if 364 days of the year you aren't on set and it's the one, you know, it's been a year since you've been on set. There is that relief. There's that excitement. There's the nerves, of course, that come with it. But there can be that sense of like, oh, people taking care of me. And then it means they I'll, linger. It's okay to be excited. Dude, like, it. I love it when an actor is excited. Like, we all do. We literally, like, we'll talk about if there's an actor that it's like their first, you know, thing. And if they're excited in the chair, like, it honestly makes the crew's day. Because, you know, for us, we're there. We're there I mean, I worked a 76-hour week this week. You know, like, we're there day in, day out. And I think it's just the people that uh, maybe they're excited, but they try to act jaded or they try to act cool about it. And, like, it's okay to be excited. It's, you know, even if it is your one day out of the year, then, like, that's cool. Just, you know, I guess understand that everyone has a job to do. Mm -hmm. And it's like that respect should go both ways. Like, the crew should respect that the actor has a job to do. And, you know, actor understands that everyone else has a job to do, too. So if I've arrived sort of, you know, five, six minutes before my call, I'm – uh, comfortably in my trailer uh, before my makeup call. Uh, is there anything about that first part of the morning or, or first part of, of the day for the actor as it relates to their relationship with you uh, that is a, a red flag for for them sort of showing their greenness or anything like that that you'd want to sort of cover? Someone needs to know where you are at all times, like needs to be within eyeshot. So that's kind of like why we give you also like chairs and trailers because it's like, okay, there. 
Like it's like, or it's like a, a fire extinguisher. Like you, you just need to know wh where it is at all times. And so if it's like, if you're somebody who you're like, okay, I know that I just, I need to walk around. I'm going to go crazy. You know, if you just touch base with your base camp PA or be like, hey, I need to go take a call. Here's my number if you need to call me. Just, you know, understanding that it's like, we will, we need to know where you are and then we will come get you. Yeah. If you are like, hey, I'm here, I'm in my trailer, I've already given my breakfast order. If like, you know, breakfast is somewhere else, if it's in base camp, you know, be like, hey, do you think I have time? Even just asking like, hey, do you think I have time to go get breakfast? No? Cool. Like, I'm, I might have all this other information like, well, so our number two actress actually showed up 10 minutes late and we just put her into the works. And I know that that takes a certain amount of time. And we're going to be starting with these people and you're not up next in the system. So, yes, you should have 20. Yeah, sure. You can grab breakfast. <laughs> Like, it's just, just ask us. It's like the goodwill hunting, doing math. It really is. It really is. That's why we're like, ha, ha. yes? Are you, are you good? I think the greenest thing for me is when it's like, do they need me yet? The, the I'm peak, right here. The peek out of the door. Do they, do they need me yet? Was that knock on my door? I'm right here. That was the person next door. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, like. Yeah, that's it. And it wasn't obvious in the early days of my career to just let a PA know if they don't if they didn't see me leave that honey wagon and start to meander, then they just assume that I'm in that that trailer. Yeah. And and so even if it's like to walk to the bathroom, I a lot of times I'll try to make sure I somebody sees me even somebody walking somebody the in the hive mind. Yeah. Because yeah. it sounds simple, but even if something like, hey, um, oh, so let's say you filled out your, your start paperwork. And then you are like, great, cool, I'm going to go meander. And then, like, I bring the paperwork back. And then they're like, oh, wait, they didn't initial this one bit. And then I go and I knock on your trailer and I get no answer. And then I'm like, hello? Are you there? And I'm standing there for, like, 10 minutes, like. Are they napping? Are they getting into wardrobe? What's happening? And then they're like, and then, and then there's another fire that I have to put out. But I haven't been able to finish, like finishing this and then there's like this whole chain of events yeah and then something you report to is going where is the or where is this person yeah exactly um and let's let's stay on start paperwork for a second because i think some actors are completely unprepared for that especially if it's their first time on a set i would say in, in my experience every actor is unprepared for start paperwork <laughs> it's probably the hardest thing it's the thing I'm worst at, to be honest with you. Like, I double check and I double check and they're still, and I'm not saying I'm great at it either because even after someone else has highlighted it and the actor's gone through it and I've gone through it twice, like, I'd say like 5% of the time I miss something. Sure. It's, it's a hard thing. No one is prepared for paper. Yeah. And I'm sure you probably even get actors asking tax questions like, and what am I supposed to put for withholding? <laughs> Y yeah, like, I'm like, I'm not a CPA. I have a headset. And and that's tough. And so I think maybe it's it, it is a, a sort of uh, not a warning, but a, a cautionary tale to actors that if they've never been on set before mm -hmm. to understand that that's where the business side is going to sort of rear its elegant head in the head in their face of knowing how to fill out an I-9 and a W-4. Don't be afraid to call your agent. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. like, you know, that's what your agent is there for. You know, speaking as, as an actor too, like call your agent um, or let me know if you have questions. Don't try to wing it. And then I will go and find somebody. Yeah. I'll find one of my bosses or I'll call like, you know, the production coordinator, whoever it is. I have my um, my social security card like in this protected case because my old one got so ratty from bringing it to set. Yeah. Or even a photo of a passport. Oh, okay. If you have a passport, like, yeah, because, like, I have to be like, yes, I have looked at their I-9. Thank you. People look at me weird. I'm like, I have to. Can you show me your ID now? Yeah. They're like, what? I'm like, I know it's 4.30 a.m. Yeah. On a Tuesday. Can you show me your ID now? And, like, what sometimes happens in terms of the order of events, uh, like, I remember the last set I was on, uh, the, the base camp PA said, a paperwork's in your, in your trailer. So I started it, but then it was knock, 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 make it ready for you. And so I wasn't finished with the paperwork, but that was fine. I wasn't in that much of a rush. I was able to finish it after makeup. And then when it was time to go to set, I left my ID and my social security guard th there so that mm -hmm. PA could could um, pick it up and verify it all, which they thanked me for later. Like, thank you for leaving your ID. That's your awesome. And that's, again, just understanding that it like that 
why we're asking you to do these yeah. things and that there's consequences for us yeah. if things yeah. don't get done. And then uh, I would say as a side note, usually on a non-union set, you don't have usually as much to do in terms of a full base camp. Um, it's usually pared down a little bit because maybe it's a one day commercial shoot or um, maybe it's a non-union film. That's where you really need to keep your agent in the loop because if you see yeah. a contract that isn't uh, sort of protected by SAG-AFTRA in terms of minimums, um, you know, there are cases- Take photos, take yeah. take photos of it. Make sure that you take photos of everything. If you have any questions, you know, it's, again, it's one of those um, fine line things where we can't like on a SAG shoot, we can't let you leave until the paperwork is done. Yeah. Like, there's nothing worse than like, okay, they're reps. It's like, did they finish their paperwork? Like, yeah. wait. And you're like running, like chasing them down in the parking lot. And true or false, it's more important that they at least sign and initial their contract yes. than the tax paperwork. Yes, absolutely. Because we can always, like, they need, you need to sign everything and we can get that information later. Like, if you aren't able to fill out the information. So yeah, that's also another great um, thing. Like if you have to run and do something, make sure that you just assign an initial everywhere and it should be highlighted and sticky noted and, you know, yeah. laid out for you. Okay, I just wanted to clarify, there are two types of paperwork that will be in your trailer when you first arrive in the morning. You will have your contract and then the tax paperwork. You must, must, must sign your contract before you can appear on camera. That's why there will be a sort of fire lit under you to at least sign or initial that contract. The tax documents are also important and need to be filled out ASAP, but if you get whisked away to set, you can fill that out once you get back uh, uh, before or after lunch or some other downtime before the end of the day. Oh, and the only other caveat I'll say is that some productions have moved to digital paperwork, so you might be asked to fill all of that out before your shoot day. So fun to to, to kind of go to set when you're ready to act and then suddenly you're faced with all this, this paperwork. Yeah. Oh, I'll say an, another big thing um, for costumes friends is uh, bring underwear. <laughs> Don't show up without underwear or a bra if you're a woman mm -hmm. just don't do that yeah. the amount of times is 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 more than you would think yeah because zero is what i would think and it's it's like they have solutions for it but they shouldn't have to have yeah <laughs> oh the other thing to bring is um like you were talking about like you know rotting in the honey wagon um because in the <laughs> I'm, again, I'm not going to name names. In the um, in the words of a very great second AD that I know, get them ready, let them rot. <laughs> because there is nothing worse than, let's say, that the onset crew works super hard and everything's just on fire. Like, in, uh, like good on fire, not bad yeah. on fire. And then, oh, wait, guys, we didn't bring the actors in early enough. We're ahead, but they're on track back there. And now we just have to wait for 40 minutes. You know, so it's like they really do try to err on a very optimistic side of getting actors in and getting them ready because we'd rather have them than not have you guys and not have you guys be rushed. So if it if you guys are in base camp for a while, that doesn't necessarily mean that things are going wrong. A lot of times it does, but it doesn't necessarily. Sure. Um, so bring AirPods, bring a book, bring whatever like it is that like like an airplane. I feel like I should treat it like, you know, you're waiting for your airplane if you like scrolling on instagram all day i don't you know sorry i do i shouldn't like it it's bad for my brain but you know i know people that they knit they crochet they whatever it is that you like to do i'd say be prepared to basically be waiting in in, in an airport is that something that you sort of read the actor right away of like oh they're gonna be the type that i need to uh sort of give them five even when they have ten no we're always entirely truthful <laughs> um, with every <laughs> i imagagine with actors that are there on a weekly who who are there yeah. you get to know them then you probably do start to know their behavior and... i also know who's a fast walker mm, that's a good point like you know there's uh, but here's the thing it's not just with actors like you do that with everybody i i also spend a lot of time on set um like i said i've spent time in base camp but like you know am i the out of my kind of like pie wedge of experience, I've spent a lot of time on set as well. Um, and you do that with DPs. You do that with, you know, every single person. Because at the end of the day, um, it's the AD department's job to know time. It's everyone else's job to do their job. It's great if they have an awareness of time. But really, if it's going to really be 10 minutes, most people don't know what 10 minutes is. So we say five. <laughs>
you know, if I'm talking a background, if I'm talking like there's a that kind of, again, goodwill hunting math that goes on. So it's like we do kind of read the room, we read the actor, but it's not because actors are any different than anybody else on a film set. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I say, all right, guys, we're going to start our pre-boarding process. That's my my. So it's like, let's start lining up. Let's get ready. So when they say, all right, we're bringing you in. And that's kind of what a warning is going to be. So if we give you like a 10 to 15, if you have any final things, like you've been waiting to put your jacket on, that might be good. But it's like, hey, you know, use the bathroom, get your bag together, make sure you have your sides, you know, like anything that you need. And then we're going to start loading you up onto the van. Yeah, because I think for everyone, every department involved, it would it, it's uh, I, I would rather be ready early and have a little bit of downtime. Uh, in, in other words, it'd be later, the, the actual call be a little bit later than was anticipated, than to be told you've got 10, but then at eight, they're like, are you ready? Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, I thought I had two more. And now everyone feels rushed. Exactly. And Which then, as an actor, right, can then trickle into that onset experience. And that can just not set you up for success as you yeah. meet people for the first time and then get you know taken straight in for a rehearsal. So, And that's why, like, like I'm saying, there's a lot of um, information and problems that's, like, we're dealing with. But we're doing that so that you guys can just focus on the work. And so um, I just kind of want to go over. So in base camp, you're going to show up. You're going to get, usually it goes like, um, it depends, but it's like makeup, hair, and then you're last going to dress. They're going to set your room. It'll either be set before you show up or while you're, um, you know, in hair and makeup. You're going to get ready. You're going to hang out. Um, tr usually they try and have you eat there um, and then travel to set. However, sometimes um, some director AD teams like to rehearse at call, at crew call. So if... Um, that means that we might pull you from the work, so you might not be ready yet. You may travel up to set with your hair and curlers or whatever. Then rehearse, rehearse. Great. Everyone knows what we're doing. You guys can go back to base and continue getting ready, and then we'll bring you up. Or they're like, all right, let's just let the crew load in, get set up. You guys will fully cook, get ready 100, travel to set, and then when you're on set and you're 100, then you're going to get wired, and then you're going to hang out your chair. So it's like hair, makeup, costumes, wire. I, I've learned to ask the question when they're like, okay, they're ready for rehearsal. And, and I ask, are we coming back or is this like we're yeah. going for the day? Because um, I remember the first time it happened to me that it was a long travel to set. It was like a 10-minute van ride to set. And I was thinking, oh, I guess, well, then we'll come back. And I was like, nope. Yeah, we all your phone through. and everything. Yeah. Th there's no predictability necessarily there um, from, from set to set. The constant is that the PAs are your friends. The way that our department is organized as it relates to actors and more specifically base camp. Um, well, okay. So over here, you have your first AD. They're in charge of everything, um, the schedule, and they're running the set. They have the key second AD who runs the um, the call sheets and the logistics, and they're going to be the ones that usually like first reach out to you. and They're like, hey, here's your call time. Then it depends on the show. They sometimes have a base camp AD um, or base camp PA. They pretty much do the same thing. It's just a base camp AD. It's like, you know, the next Pokemon evolution. Um, and then they'll have, like, helpers that help, you know, run with, like, breakfast and that sort of a thing. Then you kind of get handed off to your first team PA who's on set, who's going to be kind of your main point of contact running you guys. They may have a helper, but there's a bunch of PAs that are all on channel one. And so as long as one of us sees you do something or if you let one of us know that you need something, if you're standing next, it's like, oh, hey, do you know where water is? Could I grab a water? Sometimes it makes more sense for one of us to go and grab a water because it's like, hey, hey, they, they need you. Like, I, I can go get water, but like I can't be in front of the camp. Like, you're the only one that can be in front of the camera right now. So that's, you know, it's like, but we are there for you. We are a hive mind. We're here to help um, look out for, you know, whatever you need. If you need, if you like really need to use the restroom or also there's a set medic. If your like feet are starting to hurt, if you start to have like, I don't know, like your stomach's a little bit upset from lunch. It's like, don't try to be a hero. Don't try to muscle through it. Like we have a set medic for a reason. Just like, let us know that. I feel like that's a thing that people don't talk about a lot is that it's like the set medic just is a walking CVS. And oftentimes they're not an obvious uh, person in terms of their, you don't always see that set medic. Yeah. Uh, so it's not always something that's on the front of the actor's brain to even ask for, for assistance in that way. I feel like your kind of start work finishes, your day players, like they are, 
sometimes a little bit scared when they get on a set and like sometimes scared to advocate for themselves in terms of like, you know, again, maybe you have a hangnail or you have a headache or, you know, whatever. I think that's such a great uh, thing to bring up for the, the green actor who is start work finish, which for any green actors listening, that just means you're only on set for one day. And um, to to advocate for yourself, because on the one extreme, it's not a spa day. And like we kind of yeah. started off by saying, but also to uh, to feel confident that you have earned your place on that set and to not shrink yourself unnecessarily because because this is all new and you're not sure, how, you know, what cog you are in you know, this machine. And yeah. And it's it's a job. You know, it's not a spa day. It's like but it's it's a job. It's the cool coolest job. Yeah. I feel like I mean, not just being an actor, but I feel like the film industry is the coolest job in the entire world. And it's a job. Um, a lot of times, like in television, actors, like, again, just if you have, like, one or two lines, you're, you're probably not going to get that FaceTime with the director that you've been hoping. Like, no news is good news. You come in, you say it, and it's like, great, we've got that moving on. And it's like, I thought I was going to... And I also feel like, especially if you're used to theater, where there is such an intimate relationship between the actor and the director, when it's, like, really, that's... You're, you're, you're just not going to get that, I'd say, 90% of the time. I have found that it just makes the, the dance it's so much better when I can establish a rapport with Basecamp PA, with uh, makeup and hair and wardrobe, um, even props if you're if you're sort of heavily propped up and, and you're going to be dealing with the props yeah. department a lot. What I found is when there's, when you're like one of very few principals working that day, because maybe the series regulars aren't in your scene, maybe you're maybe it's you're, you're a news reporter and it's just your coverage. So there might be some extras, uh, some background, but otherwise it's just you. That's when everyone is going to be very attentive and no one's going to miss that microphone that you were holding or that watch that yeah. that you had on. But if you're one of 12 principals and the other 11 are series regulars, that's where, you know, sometimes, uh, especially if you're the type of actor who just like beelines it back for base camp, because maybe it's a walk, right? Yeah. It's, it's not a bus uh, type of situation. And uh, and so then you end up back at base camp. Please don't go back to base uh, just because if it's a walk away, please, please don't. Unannounced. Oh, and another thing that I do want to point out, though. So there is a um, a division line between base camp PA and first team PA here in the southeast um, and also in L.A. But in New York, the New York method is actually just to have one for um, one like talent PA. And they start out with you in base camp and then they travel with you to set. And then they will go back um, if a second wave comes. Then you just have what's called a paperwork PA, where they just handle the paperwork on set. So it's a little bit of a different layout. What about any other behaviors that that actors do on uh, uh, in, in, when they're under sort of your purview? Reading a call sheet. If you don't know how to read a call sheet, I would say ask somebody to teach you how to read a call sheet because it will... I'm really not saying that to be mean, but like you were pointing out, there's like all these other actors. It's like, look at the scene. Look at this. Look, see, there's 16 actors in the scene, you know, or like it's a one eighth page. It's a this. It has stunts. What's going on? Like there's just the call sheet is so cool. There's so much information there. Yeah. You know, even like um, like what props. Oh, they'll list out what props are needed for what scene. And if you're like me and you like information, like the call sheet is your friend. So that I can I can predict so much more of my day by if I know how to read a call sheet mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, oh, they called me early. Because maybe, for instance, uh, I it, I was a last second booking, so I'm actually fitting the morning of my shoot. So you're going to need more time. It's going to be padded more. Yeah. So I might be last up, but it's because I need to be there early for a wardrobe fitting because if they have to alter something or find something – uh, then I need to be there, you know, much earlier. And and that might not be obvious to an actor who just sees, oh, I have a, you know, six o'clock call time. Um, and then wondering, you know, why am I not going to set? It's 2 p.m. Yeah. Well, it's because we had to fit you. And and if you looked in the call sheet, you're, you're cast number 30 and you're not listed until that last scene. I'd say, like, don't be afraid to ask questions. We think that it's cool whenever an actor wants to engage with, like, a crew member just, like, as a human being and as a crew member. I think we've been talking a lot about what happens if you have a lot of downtime, right? But also if you are if you have a scene that requires focus, like if you've if for your own process you feel like you need to be you know, something like again, don't be afraid to advocate for yourself. Like don't you don't need to be liked by everybody. You don't need to come across and be like 
again, making yourself small, like we were talking about. You don't need to be like, hi, hi, yes, hello, hello. I'm here to be liked by everybody. If, yeah. if it, you're like, hey, so I have two lines, but it's about how my friend just got shot in front of me. Like I'm being interviewed by the police. Hey, um, I'm just going to be right over here. I'm just going to, you know, I, I need a second to kind of stay in it. Okay. I'm going to be right over there if you need me. Because sometimes some of the other actors like to be really chatty at the chairs and you just need a second. Just let us know what you need and then we will, you know, work together to figure out how to best um, accommodate that. I loved what you said earlier about the cash chairs uh, just almost being like the the marker, uh, not so much as for comfort as it is like, so I know where you are. Yes. <laughs> that, that I've never thought of it from that standpoint. And I've always thought of it as the courtesy, the the thing of like, oh, let me set up a, a chair for you. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's that makes so much more sense of. It's so that I know where to look first for that person. Giving you a place that you're allowed to be. Because the film set is a big, scary behemoth of, you know, just like there's gear and there's staging and there's all this stuff. Like, it's this is this is y'all's space. Like, you get to be here. You get to sit there and be on your sides if you want to. You get to, but also, yeah, so I know where, where you are. Jumping all the way to the G and signing out at the end. Uh... Oh, yeah. Take a photo. Take a photo. Uh, don't leave before you sign the G. There's there's a very tired person holding a clipboard that wants you to sign that so bad. So the exhibit G is basically your um, time card um, for SAG stuff. It's going to have like your name, your character, when you were in, and whether or not you NDB'd. Yay! What's an NDB, you ask? I have to explain it all the time to everybody, including crew members. So... Um, an NDB stands for a non-deductible breakfast. The re reason why we say that is because um, you are actually not on the clock for the 30 minutes that you're given for lunch. So that's subtracted from your total working time. So if you came in at 7 a.m. and we wrap you at 7.30, you would have worked a 12-hour day because you subtract that. Now, let's say that the crew came in at 8 a.m. According to the SAG guidelines and the IATSE guidelines, um, you have to break for a hot meal every six hours that you've been working. So if the crew came in at 8 and you came in at 7 and we all break on the cruise time at 2 p.m., really you would be given two meal penalties unless we give you that hot breakfast. What that does is that it brings your call time in line with the rest of the crew. So that's also why we give you breakfast and why it's important that you're kind of like given breakfast. Now... Sometimes, as I'm sure you can attest, things get a little crazy and you may not have, have had a chance, you know, to eat it. And that's a kind of conversation that's like a, you know, we just, we, there's a lot of productions that are going to be like, hey, please just, just say that you had a breakfast so that, you know, we aren't hit with a bunch of like meal penalties. But that's, that's going to be different for every actor. My experience of it as, yeah, you could, you could be sort of the, um, I don't know what the right label is, but the type of person who is. Uh, litigious there you go that's a great word for it and 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 trying to keep everyone accountable you know for for every letter of the contract or you could look at it of if it was one of those days where it was hurry up and wait well you had your 15 minutes somewhere yeah. you could know. you find it somewhere before or after crew call yeah. or you know it's like whether or not it was called as an ndb um and and so then it becomes uh, what mentality do you want to have? Do you want to have a me versus them mentality where it's like, no, you didn't call NDB, you know, and it's like, oh, gosh, now you're making. Yes, you're you're, you're right. I, it, you didn't have that 15 minutes or whatever. But, or you can be of the mentality of like, I realize that everyone is trying to keep this thing afloat. It's and it's amazing that anything ever gets shot if you look at all. It's the like parts. building a skyscraper while like in real time, It like like. As someone's going up the stairs. And I just want actors to know what the NDB is and kind of know their rights um, as someone who works in production, who it's like, I, I'm i trying to get the production, you know, again, off the ground. But I also do care about crew members and I care about actors. And I so I'm like, hey, this is what it is. I can't counsel you guys either way. This is it is what it is. So I'm glad to hear your kind of perspective on that because yeah. I'm just like. So here's the paper. Because <laughs> I've, I've definitely uh, swung back and forth on that pendulum. I've been through phases in my career where uh, I was feeling so much more litigious in, in terms of what I was owed. And, and it's like anytime you feel that, I mean, that litigiousness is really anger, right? And it's like if you unpack anger, there's always something underneath anger. Yeah. And for actors uh, who've been doing this a while, you have inevitably been through those periods where – you feel resentful towards the industry for something, uh, the lack of auditions, the lack of bookings, something. And 
So it's like when you do the hard work on yourself and you ask yourself, why am I angry about an NDB? <laughs> you know, it's like the, it's it's not because Basecamp PA didn't call or didn't give it to me. It's There's something at the root of that that's probably nobody's fault on set. And maybe you should think about that. It's And that's the thing, too, is it's like, look, I am this set is not every single set you've been on. Like, I know sometimes people, they come in and it's like they have a chip on their shoulder for whatever reason. And it's like, I'm, I'm really sorry that another production hasn't treated you that way. Like, I always try to make sure that everyone has a great time in my base camp, you know, like and but I can't answer for the past sins of that production. Okay, and I wanted to clarify the discussion one more time. sag has worked tirelessly for decades to ensure certain protections for actors on set. For instance, the NDB. That's something that had to be negotiated, and it's meant to protect actors. And so I'm not advocating that all actors collectively turn a blind eye when the NDB isn't called or isn't given. But what I am saying is to be careful that anger, bitterness, and resentment that has come from a previous set or maybe several experiences doesn't get carried into this new experience. If you walk on set looking for red flags, expecting violations to happen, I can just say you will not have fun on set ever. Trust me, I've been that actor. Not proud of it. Another very powerful phrase is, it's okay, I've been broken. Like, when it comes to lunch. So let's say you're on a, an important phone call, and it's like, you're given 30 minutes for lunch. So if it's like, hey, I need to break you at 12, but you're like, I want to finish up this phone call, you saying, hey, it's okay, I've been broken, means that it's like, even if you finish up your phone call in like five minutes and you don't sit down to eat, it's like you understand that we still need to bring you back in at 1230. So at that point, you're choosing what to do with your 30 minute lunch. You know, but if if you're on a phone call and my second AD is like, hey, have they been broken yet? It's like, really? It's like they they might be like, well, we can't call it until they sit down. And I'm like, I've told them that we tried to give them the food. So if you just say like, hey, I've been broken, it kind of, it covers both of us. Yeah. And then that's going to show like, hey, we broke him at noon. He's back in at 1230. Also, another thing is the reason why we um, push actors and hair and makeup and costumes to the front of the line is for after lunch touches. So um, again, we do this thing called last man. So let's say that we break for lunch at 12, right? But then you have this camera guy that has to get this big thing off of him. And, you know, he doesn't manage to make it through the line and sit down until 12.08. That means that the entire company is going to be back in at 12.38 to give him a chance to, to eat for 30 minutes. But what we do is that we have hair and makeup. And if, let's say, everybody was just mixed in, and okay, now we're back in. We were in the middle of a scene before we broke. But now we have to get all the actors back into the trailer to, to, you know, do the after lunch touches, like lipstick has come off, hair has gotten weird, all this stuff. Even if it takes five, 10 minutes, that's five or 10 minutes that the crew is just sitting there like. So the idea is that we push the actors and hair and makeup to the front of the line so that we can get y'all back in sooner to start those after lunch touches so that then, okay, we're all back in. Let's, you know, pictures up. If you're trying to be courteous and say, oh, do you want to go ahead? And it's, like, it's like, no, you've been push to the front for a reason for a reason thank you so much like i i i'm sometimes like hey i want to go home early tonight uh, uh, the sooner you get through the sooner that this we can all get back like there there's a reason yeah. please th thank you so you can let one of those other cast members go in front of you who who is who is all being sort of pushed to the front of the line but don't let start letting crew go in front of you yeah exactly it's like no no there's there like again there's a reason and it's um as much as I think actors might want to think it's because, you know, it's their spa day, as we were talking about. Like, it's it's not. Yeah. You know, it's it's to try and hopefully get everybody home at a halfway decent time. Yeah. Um, the other thing, too, is that um, don't be afraid to ask for a courtesy. Like, if you're from out of town or, you know, or, or not even from out of town. Like, I know if you have, like, an hour or something drive and you're getting off at, like, 3 a.m., like, that is something that production provides to crew members. We also provide it to actors. Or not we, but, you know, the travel coordinator. But they will put you up in a safety hotel. So if you are doing an overnight, if you have, like, a late shoot, um, always kind of – this is goes out to anybody, not just actors. But have a toothbrush and, you know, like a pair of pajamas in your car. Yeah, I think that's another thing that so many people would either not want to be a burden or, for whatever reason, either not think to do it or try to muscle through it. So they can, and, and there's 
enough anecdotes of, of accidents that have happened that it's just not worth it. Um, and to know that that's available, I think a, a lot of greener actors would not even think that that is something. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to ride the line of like be, being honest. Um, if you just come to set... Like, I have some actors that I love them, but they, they like, let's say that you're working Tuesday, you're working Thursday. You don't have anything to do, so you show up on Wednesday. And this is sometimes where it's like, oh, okay, they want to hang out at Village. Let's get them, like, some context. And it's like, oh, my God. Or it's like they got an Uber to set, but now we have to figure out how to get them a van back. And it's like I've had actors that just, like, um, want to hang out afterwards. And, as and if – you don't make it clear that it's like, hey, I understand I don't need the red carpet treatment or it's like, I know that I'm, I'm just here on, on my own. Like, let's say you wrap in the afternoon and you want to hang out until like, I don't know, second snack or something because you heard it was going to be a grilled cheese bar. <laughs> it's like, understand that you're it goes better for everybody if you are like, I don't need a chair, dude. Like, I'm just here because otherwise it's like we're like in a weird like, what are you doing? Ah. Uh, we don't really know what to do with you. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, that, that point there is is uh, that person might feel like, well, there's no big deal. One extra person. And plus, I'm working. I'm just on a day off. But from your standpoint, every other crew member who has to account for for that actor when they're working, that like on the days they're working, like you have that that figured out. Right. I know what I'm focused on today. And so then when, yeah, when you have this distraction of this extra thing that it can at the very least just be a distraction, but at the very most could really interrupt the flow of, of what's happening. Um, go, going back to the sort of the goodwill hunting thing of making oh, all these yeah. calculations, then you have this weird wild card who, who has shown up and who, you know, isn't a studio executive that, that has the right to do it. It's, it's, it's that they're just kind of we weird. Love you. Like we, we love you. We <laughs> love you guys, but it's also a little bit like just, understand that like we are there to accommodate and to um anticipate you and so there there's this kind of ripple effect that happens so i'd say like you know for greener actors it's like understand and be aware that there are these ripple effects there's this accommodation that's kind of constantly worrying like you know like happening like a machine but also don't don't let that phase you i guess like again there's a 30 people looking at you it's it's okay. There's going to be fires that you do not know about, you do not need to know about. And honestly, everyone there is there to make you look good. Like, we are rooting for you. We want you to have a good time. We want you to do a great job. I think the only last question I have that kind of piggybacks off this discussion is either asking to bring a guest to set or bringing a guest to set unannounced. No, please, 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 please don't. Please don't do <laughs> the that. The look on your faces says it all. Please don't do that. And especially, like, if it's an indie or something, like, it's – like, you don't know how much food they have, how much food they they chose to bring. And that puts us in this weird thing. It's like, do we have to get them a chair? What's going on? They have an entourage. It's usually distracting that person. That's also the thing, too, is that if you're not on the call sheet, like, it – the call sheet has everybody's name that is working. Everybody, the crew's on the back, the actors are on the front. It has like the executives up top. If you just have somebody that's just wandering around that like maybe one person knows who they are or like nobody, it's it can be a, a, a liability to have somebody that you know hasn't been cleared. Nobody knows who they are. It's it, 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 it upsets the hive mind. If it's a really tight set, if it's like a historic house, like that's very different than if you are, I don't know, in – a mall or something like that. So I'm going to say there's a very big difference between visiting and hanging out. Ah, yes. Like swing by for like 30, 40 minutes. Very cool. I think, you know, there's there's a clear sort of uh, trend uh, of of uh, points that we're making, which is to treat it like a job, treat it like like what it is. You know, it's a working set. It's it's not a vacation or a spa day. And a great way to get information about how far along, uh, you know, you are if you ask somebody like, hey, do you know if they've turned around in the scene before us? So generally the way that um, in television you shoot things is that, you know, you're going to do your wide master and then you're going to come in, you're going to go tighter and then you're going to turn around and go tighter and then finish with like a bonus insert or something like that. So that kind of n just being able to hear and know like, OK, guys, turning around, doing this, like moving on, um, second team. Like, like, okay, we're moving on. We're getting second team in there. That kind of gives you um, a barometer for how close it's going to be. 
And even just asking, like, hey, do we know, like, do we have an estimate? Like, um, oh, changing a lens takes two to three minutes. Flipping the world, like 15 to 30. Mm -hmm. So if lightning strikes within, I think it's, um, it depends on the local, like the way that IATSE has it set up, but um, within like a certain mile radius, like no one can go outside for 30 minutes. So please listen to us. You know, if there's like a lightning delay, like we may, may let you know if you're stuck in a trailer, you know, it's like, please like try your best, like listen to us. I've been like on a stage before where like our base camp was like inside and then people wanted to go outside to smoke. And it's like, hey... Please don't do that just for, like, safety. Yeah. I also want to go back to the whole, like, get them ready, let them rot. It's like, but sometimes having the actors ready forces the DP to stop fiddling with lights. Mm. Because if it's one of those things where it's like, but are they ready for me on set? Oh, actors that are like, but are they ready on set? Are they ready for me on set? Which I get that it's easy to be to think that we're lying to you, but we never lie to you. We never lie to you. If they are asking us to invite you, it's because they are just because the boss changes like you know the powers that be started to have an idea by the time that you showed up and things went sideways like again also ask us like hey do you know what's going on and you know like they invited us why are we still waiting and i'd be like oh they're making a lighting adjustment like something happened but also like you end up in this standoff where it's like are the actors ready are they ready for me on set are the actors ready? Are they ready for me on set? And we're in the middle like, can someone just be ready, please? Because that'll make the other one be ready. Yeah. So it's like, that's why like we rely on you. But yeah, I, I hate that. Like, are they are they ready for me on set? And it's like, they will be if you're there. So many things can cause those last two minute delays on set. And to not and to not assume that that, oh, well, I had two more minutes that you <laughs> It's like, no, at the time of your of you getting on the van, we thought. Yes. And then, uh, uh, you know, a light blue or, you know, it takes time to try out a lens. And then when they realize this does not work, like you said, it's two to three minutes to change that lens. And that's not people messing with the actor's time. Yeah, we're not it's just just what happens. Also, the it's a cascading effect. I really want to bear in mind that it's like, you know, don't be too early, you know, like be early, but be early, please. Even if you're 15 minutes late, there is, again, like, that's time that it's, like, 15 minutes late to be into hair, makeup, then costumes and going. Then that might be 15 minutes that we are waiting around on set that you have anywhere from 80 to 150 people that are sitting there waiting. And that's, like, it can cost a production thousands and thousands of dollars. Even though slight delays. And that's why 80s have a um, life expectancy in their like late 40s. <laughs> like you said, it cascades. Um, and so if you show up what you think was on time to base, but really it's crew parking. And now you're like, oh, and, and maybe the van, you caught the van cycle just at the wrong yeah. time. So now, uh, so now you're again your blood pressure up because now you know you're going to be late for your call. Yeah. There's a whole machine to get into the work, you know, like yeah, that's why we call them the works, right? Yeah. Oh, um, also, I probably shouldn't have to say this, but um, it's actually not a nice thing usually to send a PA on a Starbucks run. We have Uber Eats in this day and age. I'd say just, you know, Uber Eats. And if you want to be nice, get your, your PA a Starbucks. But, like, demanding a Starbucks run and then offering to pay for it, like, it seems nice. But it really, like, that's a thing that we now have to organize and lose a man for. Yeah. Like, I'd say for me, the biggest, like, diva maker is um, people that don't understand what set they're on. Okay, first team holding on set, like, where we have the chair set up is going to be the nicest room that we have. If we're in the Atlanta underground, you know, it's going to be a tent with a heat. Like, it's like we're, we will do the best that we can. But understand, like, if we're in the middle of the woods, you know, if or if it's a Lifetime movie or something like that, where it's like we're all in this tiny house up in, like, you know, northern Connecticut or something like that. I found that it's usually the divas are people that were, like, really big in the 80s or something. And we're on these really big sets and now don't want to reconcile the reality of the um, the set that they're on right now. You know, or how quickly a show is moving and kind of like understanding like that reality or how slowly, like if they're really taking a long time to set things up. Like, oh, it's so cool. Also, if you are a like, you know, a greener actor, by the way, like talk straight to the camera. So there's this entire department called Crafty 
and their entire job is just to give us snacks. They have really cool snacks at all times and like a coffee machine. And then twice a day, about three hours after, three hours after crew call, three hours after lunch, they bring out a hot snack, which can be pizza. It can be a grilled cheese bar. It can be wings or, you know, whatever it is. They are your friend. Yeah. But thank you, Jessica, so much for giving up your time to yeah, of course. educate me and by extension, uh, all the other actors who will be watching this. Yeah, cool. I hope there is uh, some something good in there. Uh, there was more good stuff that we had to cut for time's sake, but there were so many great takeaways from this interview. My thanks again to Jessica Farmer for sharing her wisdom. And even though we tried to clarify some stuff along the way with title cards and these cutaways, if you have any questions about some of the lingo that Jessica shared or anything else that came up in the interview, drop a comment below. If I can't answer it, I'll reach out to her and see what her answer is. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on set.